Welcome to Get the Facts. This is the program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm Theodore Henry. Today we're looking at the fisheries sector with a more direct focus on tilapia. There's been a steady production of this fish and the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries is pushing further growth through its Grow Smart, Eat Smart campaign. In studio with me is Director of the Aquaculture Branch of the National Fisheries Authority, Avery Smichael. Welcome to the program, Lady Smichael. Let's jump into getting the facts. Thanks for having me, Theodore. All right. First and foremost, I need to know, what is the NFA? Well, the National Fisheries Authority is a newly established authority. Um, it falls under the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. Right. We were formerly the Fisheries Division, but with the passage of the Fisheries Act 2018, um, effective June 1, 2019, mm -hmm. we are considered to be an agency or a division in transition, uh -huh. the National Fisheries Authority. Um, the Fisheries Act 2018 provides the authority with its guiding principles. As an authority, we are headed by a chief executive officer, Dr. Gavin Bellamy, and managed by a board of management. Uh -huh. So the, this increased focus on aquaculture in Jamaica comes alongside the increased focus on tilapia production and consumption. And why is this a priority of, of the NFA at this time? Well, Jamaicans love fish. Um, looking at our import statistics, we import about two to three times the amount of fish that we produce. And that is a substantial cost mm -hmm. to our economy. Right. Um, in 2020, it was estimated that imports of fish and fishery products was about um, 116.6 million US dollars mm. or 16.6 billion Jamaican dollars. Right, right. So there's a huge appetite for fish. We do recognize that our marine fisheries and in fact worldwide it has more or less tapered or, and stabilized and as with other food production systems um, in agriculture etc in order to feed human populations we have to look at growing our own food because oh. the wild resource will not be able to sustain the growth of the human population. Understood, understood. And I'm sure there's an environmental component of this as well. I, I, people might be surprised to know that Jamaica imports that much fish. Yes. You know, we're an island. But let's, let's keep getting some facts. The ministry recently announced that campaign that you just mentioned, uh, Grow Smart, Eat Smart. Could you tell us a little bit about how NFA plays a role in that campaign? Well, the Grow Smart, Eat Smart campaign is really looking at policies and programs that have already been um, established within the ministry. Right. Um, what it is seeking to do is to improve upon that by using adaptive technologies, innovation, research and development, and to an extent promotion to encourage Jamaicans to eat more local food. Uh -huh. So from the perspective of the National Fisheries Authority, um, what we are seeking to do is to introduce adaptive technologies. So for instance, um, we do recognize that one of the deficiencies, you could say, in aquaculture mm -hmm. is the availability of seed or okay. baby fry fingerlings. So through funding from um, a project which is administered by the World Bank, promoting community-based climate resilience in the fisheries sector project, right. we are hoping to have the funding to develop and implement a recirculating aquaculture system as a hatchery to right. produce tilapia fry. Uh, One of the benefits of this system, though, is that it can be adapted to different species of fish. So if, for instance, we wanted to diversify into other freshwater species, it can, with adjustment, be um, suited to a particular species. The other things that we're looking at is um, the use of technology in looking at what we term underutilized fish species. Right. These are basically, um, how do you put it, non-traditional fisheries. 
such okay. as, for instance, pelagic fish. Yeah. Pelagic fish, by their behavior, are fish that traverse our waters. They're not like the usual snappers and groupers that people may be used to right, right, right. that live around reefs. So if there are shelters in the ocean, deep waters, then they'll hang around for a little bit more, enabling persons or fishers to catch these fish. Um, of course, we do recognize that wild resources have to be carefully managed. Right. And if we're going to look at pelagic fisheries using fish aggregation devices and long line and new technology, mm -hmm. we do recognize that management systems have to be are also a part of that program. All right, that, that, that was a lot. And one of the things that uh, jumped out at me it goes back to your initial statement that sustainability is a big deal as a part of this. Yes. Right. So I, I think I'm getting a bit more of a clear picture of how the NFA really works yes. in this regard. Now, are there any developments that you'd like to share with us um, regarding the local production of things like oyster and shrimp? I know it's not just tilapia. Well, as I had said earlier, the National Fisheries Authority is actually looking at diversification. Um, we're looking at the exploration of underutilized fish species. Mm -hmm. We're looking at building around that, the management system to support those. So at present, again, as I had indicated through the project, um, and also through NFA's internal systems, mm -hmm. we do recognize the need to look at other types of aquaculture products, for instance. Um, we are investigating improving production practices surrounding oysters. Right. We are investigating the whole business of growing Irish moss. Irish moss in the Eastern Caribbean has had a fairly good history. Right. Um, and with the COVID-19 pandemic, several persons have expressed an interest in Irish moss, mainly for its reputed therapeutic um, yes, values. Yes, yes, of so course. These are indigenous um, species or indigenous products mm -hmm. that we as an authority see it necessary to develop for the benefit of our economy and our people. Understood, understood. We're going to come back to getting some more facts on the NFA and what we're doing, especially with tilapia in Jamaica. We have learned about the regulatory nature of the NFA and uh, keep with us. The conversation with Mrs. Michael continues on the other side of this break. Water where you're full up of roots and culture. <laughs> that must be Jamaica 60. Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going bust up. Just in. The island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. I only where I'm celebrating now. <laughs> They said the people them in you know, them come here, you know. But you see when our people decide, say the other people them free paper burn up. Them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, panta fight, you know. Medal. I'm on top, thumb, we give them in the top. The celebrations are slated to begin on January first, two thousand and twenty-two. Organized by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sport. We have more in this report. I am on site, and planning activities are ablaze. Persons are advised to download the Reggae Jamaica app to know what it pre. What it pre. <laughs> activities for the Jamaica 60 celebration. Yeah. If you don't know the app, to get the updates then. Welcome back to Get the Facts. We are continuing our conversation with Director of the Aquaculture Branch at the National Fisheries Authority, Avery Michael. 
All right, ladies, Michael, we spoke about regulation. We spoke about sustainability, the long-term vision of the NFA. Now, I'd like us to get a little bit more on the micro side of things. Tilapia farming, would you say it has the potential to be a viable business option for Jamaicans? Yes, tilapia farming is a viable business option. We have had persons who have been in, involved in tilapia farming for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, there, are, there, there are peaks and troughs in any um, production system. Right. They have gone through it. However, it is still a viable if, option. If, you know, say you the know. interviewing thing doesn't work out so well for me, and I wanted to start a tilapia farm. Are there any tips you could offer me and or viewers, of course? Okay, so as a new entrant, it is very important that you get proper technical advice and business management advice. Right. So we do recommend that before persons get involved in fish farming, that they come in and speak to the staff at the aquaculture division. One of the things that persons need to bear in mind is that at present, because of the passage of the Fisheries Act 2018, mm -hmm. um, any person who's going to be involved in fish farming needs to be licensed and registered with the National Fisheries Authority, right. and the aquaculture facility also needs to be registered and licensed. So that's one of the first things that we'd like to put out there. Um, the second thing is, um, as I had indicated, business planning is very important. Right, right. Um, many people will say, you don't plan to fail, you fail to plan. Ah, yes. So if you don't have an understanding of what your financials should look like, what your production system will look like, um, what your market looks like, then you're basically going in blind. Right. With that said, we do encourage persons to also have an understanding of what their market will be. Are there, is there seasonality in the market? Mm -hmm. Is there a particular product or form in which the market would require um, the tilapia? Um, is there niche marketing that you could do that can set you aside from other producers? Right, right. So you, you need to know your market environment as well as your competitors. Oh. Um, the other thing that we do encourage is that you do come in and speak to us because the siting of the farm is very important. Mm -hmm. You need to ensure that you have adequate um, water, that the soil type is correct, that um, the technical features and attributes of the location are suitable. You have access routes, you have electricity. Um, in terms of looking at the workers, you also need to ensure that you hire the right personnel. Right. Um, many small farmers um, will tend to make the mistake of not being present on their farms. You have to have a presence because you as the owner, operator, manager needs to ensure that your product is farmed in the proper manner. Right. Um, with that said, the aquaculture division through its extension service does provide a routine extension program to farmers where we assist them in the monitoring and fish aquaculture production. So on, on site on at site, their farms. We routinely do um, visits to the farm and we guide them through the production Understood. Um, system. Um, one of the things that we do encourage is that you follow the advice of the extension officers. It will save money in the long run. Mm. And also, especially when persons are first setting up a farm, mm -hmm. you also need to ensure that you're following the correct advice as it relates to um, pond construction. Okay. Because pond construction can be a huge investment. The capital cost can be huge. If you don't get your ponds right at the very initial part of your setup, Right. It can be very costly. To patch afterwards. Yes. All right. This is why people watch Get the Facts. I, I, I asked about tips and you gave us an entire business proposal. So really appreciate that. Now, something that a lot of people have been very interested in hearing, Denbe is back this year, July 30th to August 1. Will NFA be there? NFA will definitely be at Denbe this year. 
Um, it is a tradition mm -hmm. of the former fisheries division, the Ministry of Agriculture and the National Fisheries Authority. So we always have a presence. Many people are attracted to our booth because of the display of fish. So mm -hmm. as usual this year, we'll have displays of ornamental fish as well as the various types of tilapia that you may be familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, we are also have, will make available the opportunity for consultations of persons who are interested in going into fish farming. Right, right. Of course, persons might have heard as well um, the ads or the PSAs which say the tilapia you know and love will be at Denby. Yes. Yes. Smoked tilapia has been a hit for several years and smoked tilapia again will be back. People enjoy it for the flavor and texture that it presents. Um, in terms of the wider um, Denby show, we will be showcasing the work of the National Fisheries Authority. We'll be showcasing some new technologies and approaches, which I had mentioned earlier about the recirculating aquaculture right. system and the pelagic fisheries using um, fish aggregation devices. Mm -hmm. um, so we encourage you all to come by, visit the Denby booth at, well, the National Fisheries Authority booth at Denby this year yes. and have a fun time. All right. Sounds like there will be a lot happening at the NFA's booth. And we're just about out of time. Uh, fishermen, fisherwomen, uh, people who may be interested in making an investment, just general interested parties are watching this program. Do you have a final word for them? The National Fisheries Authority recognizes that aquaculture has potential for growth in Jamaica. We do have favorable environment. Um, we, we at the National Fisheries Authority are working at improving systems surrounding um, aquaculture development. So we do encourage you to invest, to contact us, let us have a conversation about fish farming. Um, there is potential for fish farming in Jamaica, especially due to the huge appetite that Jamaicans have. Uh, we're not only looking at aquaculture or freshwater fish farming, there is also the potential for mariculture. So we encourage persons to come in and have a conversation with the National Fisheries Authority. All right, there we have it from the director of the aquaculture branch at the National Fisheries Authority, Avery Smichael. We have gotten the facts on the NFA, but in particular, the focus on tilapia farming. This has been Get the Facts. Thank you for watching. And until next time, where we get more facts on a wide variety of subjects, I'm Theodore Henry. Take good care.